whenever I want to introduce myself, I tell about my walk, and a few minutes into the conversation, inevitably I get a puzzled look, and a, but what is it that you actually do? So instead of telling the what, I started telling the why. I was a high-tech worker. I even co-owned a startup at some point. And I was doing nice, but it wasn't so interesting, and I was not working for a great cause, and I was getting bored. And I don't like being bored. Let me tell you a bit about how things unfolded. That is Noam. This is Alexander and Inbal. That is Kim, and this is Mayan. Noam is an architect from Louisiana. Alex and Inbal from Jerusalem. He is a designer, she is a producer. Kim is an administrative assistant from Northern California, and Mayan is a rehabilitation expert from Tel Aviv. It's safe to assume that in normal life circumstances, they would probably never have met. So here they are together in a makeathon, a marathon of creating that we had two weeks ago in San Francisco. They came together from literally all over the world, and the thing that brought them there is a challenge presented by Kim. Born with no limbs, Kim was having difficulties reaching, well, most of the things in the world. Kim writes holding a pen in her mouth and leads a full and happy life, but it could be better if she could just get to the thing that is out of her reach. One in every nine people in the world lives with a disability, usually underaddressed or with an overly priced solution. In the United States alone, 57 million people live with a disability, half of them with one that is considered severe. And in the developing world, as it always is, the situation is worse. Now, many of the challenges of people with disabilities can be assisted by technology, but a large number is not, for two main reasons. Sometimes a challenge represents a one-person market, making it too unique and too expensive to justify development. In other cases, the need is, that, is just too distant from the developers, and what is not known tends to be neglected. I've always been a tinkerer and a self-learner. I started coding at an age young enough to require my mother to help me copy basic code from a Dragon 32 computer guidebook. If you don't know what a Dragon 32 is, don't worry. You're either too young or not geeky enough, you're a winner anyway. <laughs> I programmed for fun, then for a living, then for fun again, and I still do on my vacations. And over the years, I've built kites and airplanes and boats and a bunch of machines that border the line between tools and toys. I was fortunate enough to come across a group of people that are a little bit like me. They also build stuff with no particular reason. They develop projects putting countless hours into designing and thinking about them, being very smart and very, very foolish about it in the same time. They're called the makers, and I realized that I'm a maker too. In the last, a little bit more than a year, I'm busy connecting makers and people with disabilities, forming a community that helps move the needle in inclusive assistive technology. Well, you probably noticed that the world is in a major shift. Everywhere I go, I see people that want to do good. Look around you now. Really, look around you. People with good jobs, people that use their creativity, but they feel it's not enough. They want to use their talent and their time to do good and to work for a greater cause, and they can. The things that usually stop us are the most banal ones. We are short in time and our focus is somewhere else, we don't have the knowledge or the skills to address this person's specific challenge, or we just don't know how to start the conversation, or even who to talk to about it. The majority of people is not numb or careless or lazy. It was just never the right time. And that is not an excuse. This is a very real life observation. Maybe if we made things a little easier for everyone, people could do what they really want to do and help other people out. So with that thought, we created Tom, Tikkun Olam Makers. It's an open innovation platform that allows people from all around the world to address challenges like the ones Kim was facing. 
we created TOM at the Reut Institute, which is a strategy group located in Tel Aviv and in New York, focused on inclusivity and on societal growth factors. You see, it's a whole sector in our society that is excluded. People left out of workplaces, out of schools, and out of friendships, and they should not. They should not for obvious humane and moral reasons. But even from a financial point of view, imagine going to your workplace and to any workplace in the world and laying every ninth person off. Their needs, as special needs tend to be, are special. And traditionally, developing a unique one-of-a-kind solution is very expensive. But on the other hand, we have the makers, a group of people that, given the right opportunity and the right framework, are going to be amazing and do great things. What we developed is a way of bringing those two groups together and seeing this connection happening is inspiring. It's a system as simple as ABC. We invite a group of people that can describe their challenges, that have intimate understanding of it, and we call them need-knowers, and a group of people that can develop solutions, which we call makers. We put them together for 72 hours, we shake well, we serve chilled. We found out that 72 hours is long enough to innovate and to come up with solutions and prototype them, and it's not too long as to frighten very busy people away. We also found out that it's super fun. I'm getting back to Kim, Noam, and the gang. So we had an administrative assistant, an architect, and a designer in the same room. The room, I might have not mentioned, was filled with 3D printers, with laser machines, with workbenches and whatnot. Here's what they got out of it. Don't blink, it's a very, very short video. And remember, what you're going to see was developed in a little less than three days. That was one of 19 projects created at that Makeathon. And since they are super awesome, they won basically all the prizes that we had. You can see here the guy from Google giving them the Google Award for Innovation. At the same time, the guy from MakerBot is giving them the award for using a 3D printer in the coolest possible way. That might not have been the right prize definition. Sitting for a long time in a wheelchair can cause a wide range of health issues. Think about sitting for 10 hours in a long flight, but multiplied many, many times. This device created in a Tom Makeathon in the spring of 2015. It connects to a wheelchair and moves the legs of a paralyzed person. It was prototyped in two and a half days and cost about $100 to fabricate. In the team that created it, we had a physical therapist, we had a mechanical expert, but also a textile engineer and a videographer that happens to also be paraplegic. One more example. Daniela, our friend, wanted to do what we all do countless times a day, is take her phone and take a picture. Now, Daniela is quadriplegic, meaning she is immobile neck down. In fact, she is a member of the Brazilian Special Olympics team. This Six dollar zero electronics 3D printed device was created with her in a makeathon that we held in Sao Paulo in November 2014. Seeing Daniela, an Olympic player, take this device to a stroll in the makeathon premises and photographing every corner of it, I was in tears, and I wasn't the only one there. Tom is an event of organized chaos, or as we like to call it, structured spontaneous creativity. This basically means that as organizers, we never know what is going to happen. We started 14 months ago, and six events already took place in the US, in Israel, in Brazil, and in Canada. 70-something projects were created by our teams, all as volunteers. As what's most unique about it is that nearly no one in the teams that created those projects is an expert in creating projects like this. 
You see, our work is not about creating products. It's about engaging people in addressing challenges that then may result in a product. You see the distinction? I'm passionate about connecting people and about crafting environments that may benefit society. And we're in a perfect time for that. We have affordable 3D printing. We have large-scale open source projects that are in the mainstream. And we can now today start a big project and not be bound by corporate considerations or by the considerations of direct financial gain. I believe that we are only beginning to tap into the power and the potential of communities being empowered to develop for their own needs. The idea of doing good by doing what you like is a sticky one. When we started Tom, we had in mind the notion that we don't just want to create one event or one point in time. We wanted to spark a movement. And looking at the way things have unfolded, I'm happy to report that we have started the movement. It's a movement of people that use their time and talent to do good and to help others. But it's not just about makers. It's about makers and need-knowers working together, knowing that they have the power to impact their lives. TOM stands for Tikkun Olam Makers. Tikkun Olam is Hebrew for changing the world. For us, it's our obligation to make Tikkun Olam a part of ourselves and other people's everyday life. For me personally, the thought that work is a boring thing done behind a desk has always been an existential source of discomfort. And the notion that innovation and breakthroughs are just for people that have more time or more money or are more talented, well, it never made any sense and it is just not true. You're all ready to join and you don't need to change anything. If you're a designer, come and be a designer with us. If you're an engineer, come for 72 hours and build something useful. If you're a manager or an administrator, a secretary or just a curious person, there's room for you here because our world is full with opportunities to do good and to marvel in it. With everybody's assistance, we can identify challenges that need helping all around the world. We can form communities to address those needs, and we can make the world a better place 72 hours at a time. Thank you.